Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, it's Donnie. And in this video, we're going to take a look at one of several different ways we have to look at hardware information on Linux systems. And this time, we're going to be looking at the LSHW utility. Now, LSHW does not come installed by default on most Linux distros. So here on this Debian machine, for example, you would have to do sudo apt install LSHW, and that would get it for you. And once you get that, you can just do sudo LSHW. And just a good little pro tip here, you can pipe this into less because a lot of times you might be doing this on a non-graphical terminal, and that would uh, uh, then cause the output to scroll up off the top of the screen where you can't see it. But even if you're using a graphical terminal, piping it into less will allow you to use the search functions in less to find specific information. So let's go ahead here and do that. Okay, so there you have it. And here you see that it is Debian and it is a virtual machine running under virtual box. And so you see all the cool information about that. And you see like uh, information there about the vendor about the virtual box and the firmware. We have memory information here, which is 996 uh, MI bytes. It's actually set for one gigabyte, but it's showing it here as uh, the MI byte, the, the MIBI bytes, I think it is. But uh, anyway, difference is that a megabyte or yeah, a gigabyte rather is uh, well, actually, I had, I had that right the first time. A megabyte is like uh, 1,024 bytes, right? But a MIBI byte is 1,000 bytes. So that's they're just showing MIBI bytes here. But anyway, uh, CPU, you see, is an Intel Core i7-4770. So even when you are looking at the information in a virtual machine, you can still get some information about the underlying hardware. So uh, I do have a Core i7-4770 here in this uh, Hewlett Packard NV machine that I'm running. All right, And you can go on down here and you see the capabilities of the CPU, for example. And you can see there too that it is a fairly new CPU because it does have the latest and greatest SSE 4.1 and SSE 4.2 instructions that are enabled, so that's a good thing. And uh, of course, we see all the different information about the all the different uh, bridges and buses that we have in here. We have the ISA bridge, PCI bridge, all that good stuff. And the display there, nothing exciting there, just the virtual box graphics adapter network information. Again, we have information about the underlying hardware here. And so here we have our gigabit Ethernet controller that's in the host machine. And lots of other stuff there too. Multimedia information, USB stuff, storage information here, lots of other cool stuff that we have here. And I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can try this for yourself and see what all we have. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead here and get out of that. And let's go over here now, look at something a little bit more exciting. In this case, we got a actual physical machine. I'm remoted into it. This is a machine which is running in the other end of the house. And this is Fedora. So Fedora to install, do it like that, use the DNF install command here. And then to take a look at our stuff, all right, so here we have Fedora. Okay, so that's the host name of the machine. And we see the description, it is a mini tower computer a model 
XW9400 workstation from Hewlett Packard. And we see all the capabilities of it and the configuration of it. We see chassis equals mini tower, all that good stuff. And we see information there about the motherboard manufactured by Hewlett Packard, of course, and information about the BIOS. Oh, look at this date. Woo! December 10th, 2009. Yes, this is a very old machine. But you know what? I don't care. I got it from eBay for very, very cheap, and it works absolutely great. So I got no complaints about it at all. It actually is a production machine, which I use all the time. But uh, anyway, and we have the capabilities of the firmware, and then information about the CPU, and we have CPU 0 here is our first CPU. There are actually two CPUs in this machine. It actually has two Opteron quad cores in it. Opteron processor model 2380 to be exact. So it has two of these for a total of eight CPU cores. And again, yeah, you, the Opteron is something you don't really see anymore in machines, but hey, for me, as I said, it just runs absolutely great. Does what I need it to do. And uh, we see there the size of it. Now, this is kind of weird terminology. Size, 2,500 megahertz. That actually just means the speed rating, okay? So it is a 2.5 gigahertz processor. And also we have all the capabilities of it there. And one thing here to kind of save me some trouble was when I looked at this information, I saw that it only uses the SSE 4A instruction set. It does not have SSE 4.1 or SSE 4.2 because that did not come out until like the year later, right? And so there was one particular piece of video rendering software I actually wanted to install on, well, not this machine, but on another one uh, like it, but uh, found out couldn't do it because that software requires SSC 4.1. So anyway, by looking at this information, it saved me the trouble of installing that software and then finding out that it wouldn't work, right? So this is one of the ways that you can use this information. And of course, uh, other ways you can use this information, if you're building your own kernel, you can take a look in here at uh, what type of CPU you got and all of its capabilities and all like that. Uh, or if you're a developer, if you're a software developer, you know, maybe some of this might come in handy. Some of this information might come in handy. But anyway, uh, I digress, right? Uh, anyway, let's continue on here. We can go on down. And uh, again, now we have with the CPU, since this is an actual physical CPU, we have information about, about the cache. We have uh, three levels of cache here, L1, L2, L3, but they're marked here as cache 0, cache 1, and cache 2. So you can see the information about the uh, level 1 cache there, for example, 512K, uh, L2 cache, 2 megabytes, and L3 cache is 6. And then uh, we have CPU 1, which is just a repeat of CPU 0 because the two CPUs are identical. And now we have the memory information. And again, this is a little bit more exciting because we actually have more memory. We have a total of 16 gigabytes of memory. And again, this is, uh, this is referred to as the size, not the capacity. Capabilities, we have ECC, so it looks like we have a multi-bit error correction here on this particular memory stick, or these memory sticks, I should say. And so we have what's in each bank now. So at each one of these banks, we have a DDR2 synchronous memory stick running at 667 megahertz. So yeah, rather slow by modern standards, but that's okay. And each one of these is a two gig stick. And the rest of the banks there are all the same because they're all identical. And we can go on down and uh, we can look at the uh, all the other good information here. And again, I'm not going to 
go through all of it. You can just go ahead and install this on your own machine and just take a look at it at your leisure and uh, look through it there. And uh, of course, you can see some information here that can be kind of interesting, like vendor, NVIDIA Corporation. Woo! So we have NVIDIA and AMD on the same motherboard. Well, yeah, back in 2009, AMD and NVIDIA were still on friendly terms. That was back before AMD tr was trying to encroach on NVIDIA's video card market, you know, because that was before AMD had bought the uh, ATI. But uh, anyway, just a little tidbit of information. And again, you just go on down there and look at all the cool stuff that you got. And, oh, here's something. I got a firewire controller on here. And you know what? The weird part about that is I've never noticed that there are firewire ports on this thing. Hmm. I'll have to look at the back of that thing now. <laughs> See if I can find them. Yeah, the only thing I ever noticed before was just USB ports because, well, that's all I ever looked for. And, uh, of course, multimedia stuff. Again, it is NVIDIA chipset. And... The display down here, we have for our display an NVIDIA Quadro FX 3700 card. Again, very, very old, but it does what I need it to do. So, hey, if I want to look at my YouTube videos or any other type of videos, hey, it works great. But anyway, uh, you can scroll down there through the rest of it. And uh, you'll see the information about all your PCI buses and SCSI stuff, SCSI storage controller. And so, uh, and also the disk here. In this case, we have a Western Digital WD5000HHTZ disk. And actually, uh, 500 gigabytes or 460 uh, gigabytes bytes, however you pronounce that, but anyway, uh, and the difference there is a gigabyte is uh, 1,000, well, actually a megabyte is 1,024 bytes, and a maybe byte is a 1,000 uh, bytes, but uh, anyway, uh, that's that's the difference in case you're interested, but anyway, uh, this actually, it doesn't say there, but it's actually a, a, a Western Digital Velociraptor. It's, so it's very old too, but it still works. And uh, we can see there that the file system, see what the file system is there. And we see there it's formatted for EXT4 file system. And we see all the capabilities and all the attributes here of the file system. And so, uh, and we see there too, that since it is Fedora, which is a Red Hat product, it is set up with a logical volume setup instead of just regular partitions. So yeah, there's a lot of information here that you can get out of this. And then we can also look at the LSHW man page. There aren't a lot of options here for this, but there are some display options. Like, for example, you can launch the graphical utility with the dash uppercase X option if you have that installed. And you can also output the device tree as an HTML page or as an XML page or as a JSON page. And uh, we can also Come down here, another really interesting option is to sanitize. So this can remove potentially sensitive information from the output, like IP addresses, serial numbers, etc. And so you can take a look at that again here. And indeed we do, we have serial numbers here. So there's the serial number of our machine. And there might be some other serial numbers there too. Yeah, like here's the serial number again. So let's try this with the sanitize and just to see what happens.
And, oh, looky there. It works. Yay. Serial numbers are removed. All right. So, pretty cool stuff, eh? So, anyway, that's pretty much it for the LSHW utility. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, be sure to like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.